Looping. That is the best drill you can be doing in your practice. And I suck at them for two main reasons. My loops are too big and I play them way too fast. Hey everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. Today I want to talk about what I think and my instructor thinks is the best drill you can be doing in practice, which is looping and why I suck at them for those two main reasons. My loops are too big and I play them too fast. But before I get to why I play, I, my loops are too big and why I play them too fast, let's talk about what looping is first in case you're not familiar with it. Looping is effectively repetition. I was demonstrating uh, looping at the beginning of this video. It was a portion of Wayfaring Stranger, a portion that I'm having problems with. Actually, there's lots of parts of that song that I'm having problems with, and I'll be demoing that a lot today in this video. The whole idea behind looping is to find an area of the song that you're having a problem with and repeat it many, many times so you can smooth it out and build the muscle memory necessary to play it cleanly. There's a couple of ideas behind looping that will help you make very effective loops. One, if you can, tie the back end of the loop to the beginning of the loop so it's actually a loop. That makes the repetitions play out smoother and, and to some extent can speed up the efficiency and, and, and lessen how much time it takes to get through however many reps that you want to do, say it's 10, 15, or 20 reps of that particular portion of the song. The second thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're constructing your loop is it has to be big enough to cover your problem area. That's pretty obvious. But the third one is probably the most critical is that it needs to not be that big. Again, the idea is to do the repetitions of a problem area to build muscle memory. That muscle memory is built by back-to-back -back immediate repetitions of the problem area. You put too much space between the problem area and then the repeat of that problem area in the next, in the next loop and you're losing the effectiveness of the loop to begin with. You're not building that muscle memory. So again, the three things you wanna keep in mind, if you can do it, is tie the back end of the loop to the front end of the loop to make a good loop. The second thing is to cover the problem area in the loop. So make it big enough to cover the problem area. And the third thing is to keep it small enough that you don't dilute it. How my instructor says it is you don't want to, um, you don't want to spread the icing over too much cake or if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, I believe it was in the first movie of Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, where Bilbo says he feels like butter spread over too much bread. That's the whole premise. You want, you have a finite amount of attention. You want that focused on that problem area and you want to repeat it timely as, as quickly after each other as possible because too much time, not as, eff as effective. I know this, I'm telling you this. <laughs> I know the ingredients to a good loop, so why do I make my loops too big? Well, this is the first problem area that I have with loops and why I suck at playing loops or, or doing the loop drill in my practices is that I make my, too, my loops too big. And I've got two main reasons why I tend to do this. One of them is, um, <laughs> If there's a problem area that I have and I'm looping it, but I know there's another problem area that follows it in the song, I have a tendency to include it. I'll give you an example. Again, with Wayfaring Stranger, there's a section where I'm going, I'm doing a neck walk from A minor to uh, an F chord, and it is very problematic for me. It's a tricky part of the song. That's, I'm calling this the first transition to the F chord. This is not the full F chord. This I have a problem with. Getting my finger, my, um, the two problems I have with this is landing my index finger on the fifth fret of the third string without touching the, the second string on the fifth fret. And the other one is with the pinky. I, I don't have the dexterity yet or the limberness in that pinky to stand that sucker straight. So I tend, to, I tend to lean it a little bit. And when I do, if I lean it too much, 
it, it snuffs out, it goes over the fret and it snuffs out the string. So this is a problem area. This is a good loop. Now this is a loop that I can't tie the back end to the front end to make it a, you know, an actual loop. So this is just repetition. Right, then reset. And then over and over again, right? And that, but that's good, that's fine. It takes a little bit more time and it feels a little bit clunky, but that is a good loop. The problem is I can't stop right there because I know, like I said, that's, I'm not at the F chord yet, I'm transitioning. And I have a problem transitioning from the first transition to the full F chord right after that, that first loop. I have a problem with that one too. Again, trying to keep that pinky up and getting the index finger close to the fret it on the uh, on the sixth fret is, is tough for me so why not add it to my loop now this <laughs> I've just grown my loop right and that's a bad I've, I've grown my loop too much that in itself is a problem area I should just work on that but it gets worse because I know I have a problem going from this F chord to the C chord that follows and it's the next thing in the song so I include that in the loop too. So now my loop is and I hate to say it going from the C chord back to the F chord is problematic and sometimes I include that in the loop too. Now it's not a loop, now it's a third of the song, right? What was the initial intent of this loop? The initial intent was to work on the first portion of the neck walk to get my index finger to land on that fifth fret without snuffing out the, the, the third string and then making sure that my pinky doesn't go over the fret of the, was that the seventh fret now? That's gone. The idea of back-to-back -back repetitions of that to build up mess muscle memory is gone. And the reason that I think in my head when, I, when I'm making this loop too large, that this is the efficient way to do it is because that is four back-to-back -back problem areas of the song that I've just included in one loop. How great is that? It's not great. I'm not being efficient. That is a huge waste of time if I'm thinking about building up muscle memory, which I should be thinking about, that should be my focus. And it's not just affecting the first part, it's affecting every other hard part that I'm trying to include in that loop. The, the attention that I need to apply to the problem area has been diluted. I've effectively spread the icing over too much cake or spread the butter over way too much bread. But you can see, hopefully, my logic is why mentally I think that is being efficient. And I need to get over that. I need to stop thinking of it that way. The other reason, because I said there were two reasons why I make my loops too big. The other reason that I make my loop too big is that if I, I feel that, or fear, I should say, that I've I make my loop too focused and master that movement in, in such a small loop, that it won't translate when I scale it up to, or add it or apply it to the whole song. A good example of this is in Man of Constant Sorrow. That, very problematic for me for a long time. And I've worked really hard to make my loop that small. When I started practicing that particular portion of the song, my loop was actually
way, way too long. There's so much, so many unnecessary measures and notes in there that, that diluted my focus off the actual problem area. And the reason I was doing that is that I feared that if I just did that drill and nothing else, that when I tried to do that in the song, I wouldn't be able to pull it off because it wasn't, I'm not practicing it in, in the context of the song and therefore, how do I play it in the context of the song? But I can tell you from experience that it does, it does scale to the full song. You can practice a very small part and master that small part. And then when you play the song, your brain just kicks in that muscle memory for that small part and it plays smoothly. Even though you're not used to playing it in the context of the song, your brain kind of takes over and allows you to do that. It allows you to apply that, uh, that focused, you know, practice part into the whole context of the song. And again, I know this, I've been witnessing this in my own practice for quite some time, yet I still have that fear that if I make my loops too small, then it won't translate when I play the full song. The other reason why I suck at, at practicing loops was, I, I mentioned at the beginning, is I play way too fast. Now, ego plays a bit of a role here where I feel like uh, I can handle playing it faster. And it, it's really, it's really this dopamine hit addiction that, that ruins it. What happens is I have a song or I have a section, a loop. Let's say I even have it small enough uh, that it's just, you know, I've got that part covered. It's not too big, but I'm playing it way too fast because I think I can. And the reason I think I can is because after practicing it, doing the repetitions nine times, I get it right one time. I'm thinking about how, oh, I got it right. I can do this. And I'm forgetting the nine failed attempts at doing that. Now I practice 20 reps and move on to the next thing that I need to work on. What just happened? I practiced it wrong 18 times and practiced it right twice. I'm playing too fast. I can't play it at that speed. Playing it, playing it correctly 10% of the time is not playing it right. <laughs> I need to flip those numbers around. I need to be getting it right nine times out of, the, out of 10, not getting it right one time out of 10. So I need to slow it down. I need to go to the metronome, turn it down, slow it down, and to the point where I am, I'm cleaning it 10, nine or so times out of 10. But for some reason, my, my ego doesn't recognize what I'm doing. And also, I feel that I'm being more efficient. Oh, I'm just speeding through these repetitions. I can hit all my repetitions in the hour, or hour and a half I have to practice today. No, no, I'm, again, I'm wasting my time. So practicing too fast, waste of time. You're, you're just practicing mistakes. Worse, you could be just building up bad habits, right? So we need to avoid that. Lastly, the, the, the third reason why I play too fast is because playing slow is boring. There are certain parts to a lot of these songs that don't come alive until you hit a certain speed, a certain beats per minute. And when you're below that, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound good to the ear. Playing that section is really boring. It sounds discordant. It just sounds like noise. And so you want to, or I do, I want to speed it up so I can say, okay, now I can recognize that this is actually part of the song. And, and play it at that speed. And that is a big no-no too. I need to know, it, 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 does, it does not matter if I'm, I can't tell if this is a part of a song or not. I just need to play it at a speed that I'm not making mistakes. So I will end this here with two other things that I just wanted to note. Um, again, looping, if you're not doing it, uh, the biggest bang for buck you can do for your practice, in my opinion, start looping. If you're already looping and you're having problems like I'm having, you're not alone. I'm having problems too. Let's work together. Let's try to be more disciplined. Yes, you know what? We can have our fun with practice. Save it towards the end. Do the drills, right? Do, let's do the drills. Let's, you know, the small loops played slowly. Let's do those drills. At the end of practice, let's just have some fun, have a few minutes to let it rip play as fast as you want, mistakes and all, it doesn't matter. So have your fun at the end, but kind of like, you know, eat your greens before dessert. 
Anyway, I've got practice to do. I have a lot of loops to uh, construct properly and play slowly. I will see you next time. Bye.